Hey folks, welcome to part two. But well, we're back in the garage because although it runs great, it's not overheating. In fact, I think the temperature is pretty bang on. But before we carry on, look where my belt's sitting. I thought it was going to um, kind of break in a little bit and sit higher, but it's not. It's still sitting down in there. Mm, three sixteenths of an inch. In any case, it's the correct width belt. It's quite a bit longer than stock. I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 53 and... Anyway, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. In any case, I can't find much longer belt than that. So I'm just going to work with what I have. Unfortunately, I can't slide the engine any further back this way <coughs> because the uh, plate that the engine's sitting on has a lip at the back so uh, right now my plan is to kind of get everything out of the way and then zip that lip off the back the holes that the engine's sitting on they are kind of shaped like ovals so hopefully with that rear portion chopped off i can slide this back just another i don't know quarter inch half inch i'll take anything i can get just to get that belt to settle a little bit higher up on the secondary all right, engine's out again. New record, about an hour and 25 minutes. Just hanging there. So here's my plan. Uh, these are the holes I'm talking about. And uh, what I'd like to do is basically chop this whole thing off. This. And I'm gonna have to notch these a little bit. It just sort of wraps around, so. I'm going to chop this off, same on the other side, and this wraps around, so it'll, it'll still be plenty strong, and I'll cut off, I don't know, half an inch out of here, and take that all the way off, and um, I know what you're thinking, oh, you're making it weaker. Well, we're only dealing with 20 horsepower here, folks. It's uh, realistically, I mean, that looks like about eight, eight inch steel. Not to mention when this thing's all bolted in, it's gonna give rigidity to it as well. So not worried about that one bit. Um, no sense in going too far back because my bolt holes are only so big anyway. And um, to be quite honest, I'm not sure where they sit in there anyway because I can't see when the engine's in. But um, that's the plan right now. Now, I took off about a half inch, um, probably more than I needed to, but I didn't want to have to do this twice, keeping in mind that the way the holes are slotted, I'm all, it's only going to help the cost so much. So I was talking about. I did it all with a Sawzall, believe it or not. Love those things, man, with the flexi blades. Get almost anywhere with them. This is supposed to be a part two to my engine swap video to anybody who's already seen that one, except that happened almost a year ago. So I can hardly call this a part two at this point. There she is. So there's the Honda 690 runs like a freaking charm i love it runs good starts every time there's my hour meter that i hadn't yet installed in the last video which is kind of nice the hour meter on the dash is still functional however this hour meter for the engine throttle response is pretty good um Whenever you look up videos of these engines in action, the throttle response always seems chunky. And I think the answer to that is um, the, the throttle lever that came with the engine is very stiff. So it's nearly impossible to move it smoothly. But uh, with the twist throttle that came with the Argo, no problems at all there. 
Of course, it needs to warm up a little bit. It's carbureted. But once you've warmed it up, it runs quite nice. Coming around to the inside. I've got this sort of twist throttle lock, which is handy for the Argo, A for water crossings, because you can set it and forget it, since you don't need a ton of throttle input when you're crossing a pond. Also, for warming up the engine, you can pull the choke, uh, increase the idle, and let it warm up a little bit off idle, which is nice in the winter and so on. Tempered glass windshield, reason for that, the wiper. I didn't want a uh, polycarbonate windshield because those things scratch horrendously. The sides, poly. The back, poly. The glass is glass. And uh, it was cheaper than the poly actually because it is simply a deck panel or a railing panel from Home Depot for, uh, you know, like those glass railings. What else in here? I made the doors myself out of canvas tarp. The reason I have them installed and it's summertime is because they shrink. That's kind of the downside to these things. They shrink and they're practically impossible to reinstall. I'll take them off when I ride, but if, uh, if it's in storage, I'll just quickly snap them back on. The roof is off of a Razor 1000. And the um, enclosure itself is made out of this round corner, two inch by two inch aluminum. And it's just all bolted together. I'm not set up to weld aluminum. And so far this has been plenty rigid. It doesn't move at all, rock solid. The exhaust is the normal exhaust that came off of the, uh, the Kawasaki liquid cooled engine. As you saw in my other video, where I did the engine conversion. Back to the cab, the windows are made out of this like clear plastic for uh, like furniture protection. Something like what you'd see at your grandmother's house. In the back, I've got this waterproof bin. I screwed it into this plywood so that it doesn't move around and in there you just keep you know chain links straps and so on works well for my light situation i've got the regular knob for the headlights and then up on top i've got another switch and when you rock it forward it turns on the front lights and then when you rock it the other way it turns on the front and also the back reason i did that is because up here in canada in the winter it's dark at like 4 30. all led because um the rectifier regulator on this thing only puts out 15 or 20 amps and i didn't want 10 amps going to a whole pile of incandescent light bulbs Washer fluid bottle. I've got the squirter up there below my light. The hose is just pushed. I just squirted some silicone and I just kind of mashed it into the silicone. And I have that running off of my old winch switch. It's a momentary switch. And then the winch I've got on there now runs off of that button down there. So it works out nice couple USB plugs so I can plug in my phone and have maps. Oil pressure switch go into the dummy light on the dash and below it down by the filter I've got it going it's uh, I've got a temperature switch that goes up to the um, water temperature gauge and I verified it with a heat gun and an infrared thermometer um, on the sensor itself and it's bang on.
folks. I hope you enjoyed that quick little walk around. Thank you once again to everyone who uh, watched and liked and subscribed. There's no greater motivation to take on new projects and get things done than the um, than having the support of random internet people I've never met. If you haven't noticed yet, I mentioned it in one of my previous videos that my wife and I were looking for a waterfront property and it finally happened as you can tell. If you like watching cottagey types of videos, this place needs a bit of work. I'm going to be installing UV for the water uh, later down the road, a bunkhouse, maybe a sauna. I've got a hot tub that this camera is currently propped on that's leaking I'm gonna have to fix. Bunch of other little things like that. So if that sort of thing's your jam, go ahead and subscribe and come along for the journey. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers.